An indictment for the Trump Organization seems imminent. Yesterday, The Washington Post reported that prosecutors in New York have given former President Donald Trump's attorneys a deadline of Monday afternoon to make any final arguments as to why the Trump Organization should not face criminal charges over its financial dealing. The New York Times just published a piece in the last hour detailing what happened at that meeting between prosecutors and Donald Trump's attorneys. Quote, at a meeting, defense lawyers pointed to the harm, the business the Trump Organization could face if it were indicted, including damage to its relationships with banks and business partners. The prosecutors did not inform the defense lawyers if they had made a final decision on whether to Trump charge the Trump Organization. If they do charge, this would mark the first criminal charges from an investigation by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office into the former president and his business dealings. David Farenthold is a reporter for The Washington Post who broke news of that deadline yesterday. And Donya Perry is a former federal prosecutor for the Southern District of New York and a former New York State Deputy Attorney General who just co-authored a new piece on New York State's investigation into Trump. And they both join me now. Um, a lot to process here. I want to start with this meeting with you, Danya. And I have to say, as someone who has, a, has done a lot of reporting on, like, the criminal justice system at a very ground level with folks that are getting busted for um, drugs, a lot of drugs and or assaults and things like that, it's very strange, the thing that happens in the white-collar world of prosecution where you have all these meetings with their attorneys and everyone's in a room and there's these sort of, like, debates and negotiations, but it strikes me that this is, in that world, not that uncommon for a meeting like this to take place. It's not that uncommon at all. In fact, it's quite common. There, you're making a distinction, I think, between reactive investigations, which is a drug bust, you know, that, that happens in, in, that, in that line of sight of a police officer. Uh, obviously, in that event, there is no opportunity to be heard ahead of charges being filed. Typically. Right. And then there were proactive investigations. And as we know, this one has been going on for some two years now. And so uh, typically, particularly with um, possible charges of this level with uh, possible targets of this stature, it is really the regular course of business uh, to have the opportunity to be heard, including at the very last minute. And sometimes it works. It's, it's, it's the rare occasion when it works, mm. but uh, oftentimes you don't hear about those cases because there's a declination on the part of the prosecuting agency to bring charges, so it's quiet. Uh, sometimes you hear about, you know, some famous cases, I believe um, the Carl Rove case with the Pat Fitzgerald investigation with the Leaf case is, is one of those cases. So it does happen, and it sounds like they made a, a big pitch today, and we'll see what the DA's office does with that. They're not usually successful. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's no final decision at, at least reported out of the meeting, although, David, um, it was interesting to me that, according to the Times reporting of the meeting, that his lawyers made this argument about the, the, the danger to the business. It's something that you, you've covered the Trump org extremely closely, as closely as anyone. Um, this is a former federal prosecutor talking to Bloomberg who said any kind of indictment against a corporation could be the death now. From a financial perspective, it's terrible because no customer, client, or other business will want to go anywhere near a company for fear of being tainted, subpoenaed, questioned by authorities, or hauled into a grand jury. What? A, how big of a problem is this for the business as a business? Well, this is not a normal business with a normal reputation. If you remember that the Trump Organization is already kind of a business you do business with, knowing you know who you're dealing with, and you maybe take right. it out because of the connection to Trump. There are some formal things they may have to worry about. Liquor licenses is one that's a big part of their business at golf courses and hotels. Many uh, states don't allow you to have a liquor license if you're a convicted felon or if your company's been convicted of a felony. There could also be repercussions for Trump's loans. That would all come after conviction. I don't think anything that drastic will happen after the indictment. But you're right, that does seem to be a big part of the case that they're making to the public and also to the prosecutors is that you're not, you know, you may want to hurt Donald Trump, but you're going to hurt Joe Blow, who, you know, is the golf pro at Doral, or so somebody who works in the restaurant at one of Trump's hotels. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think that the, the, the question for me is what, um, what the calculus is here on the part of the district attorney's office, honestly. I mean, obviously, what matters are the underlying facts, right, and the law as matched to those facts, Danya. But, but I, I wonder what, how you put yourself in the head of this evaluation, right, on this final day at the deadline where they've made this argument about, like, how you think through whether you're going to undertake this, which would be a huge deal, reverberate across the world. Yeah, so there are a number of factors that 
the district attorney's office or the U.S. attorney's office will consider when they are thinking about indicting a, a corporate entity. And one of them is, as, as David said, and as you alluded to, collateral consequences to Joe Blow or that the you know many, many employees who might be affected. That is just one of many factors, though. And so the DA's office also will be looking at the other factors that Joe would not address in today's meeting or Thursday's meeting with uh, Trump's lawyers. And they include the pervasiveness of the conduct, how, how long it's been going on, whether the company is accepting responsibility, whether it's instituting any remedial measures. So that will be one factor, the collateral consequences, but there will be many others. And the other ones seem to, at least from the distance of, of people who are not in the know, do not seem to cut in favor of the Trump organization. So those will all be assessed uh, in the last hours of, of the decision-making process. David, and you've been reporting on this, there's a strong sense, right, that this is the beginning, not the end, whatever gets announced here. Well, if there were charges. I think if there were none, I think it would probably be a, a, a closed book. But we're at the beginning. You have Trump's lawyers, uh, one of them saying today, you know, the, the DA saying when this indictment comes down, he won't be charged, meaning Trump personally, our investigation is ongoing. There's an obvious sense that, that if there are charges here, this is not the end of the story of this investigation. No, I mean, I, I think the, this investigation from the outside, it seems like Alan Weisselberg, the Trump Organization CFO, is probably the most important person we're going to talk about this week. And I think even the charges against the Trump Organization, if they come, will be in relation, you know, will be as part of a broader, uh, right. along with an indictment into Alan Weisselberg. The DA uh, has to make a case if they're going to charge Donald Trump, that not only that Donald Trump broke the law, but that he knew what he was doing when he did it. He understood that the law was being broken and he went ahead anyway. You know, that's hard for a guy who doesn't use email. And so he, they're going to need Weisselberg to tell him that story. And so the pressure on Weisselberg that we'll see this week, right. I think, is really key. David Farenhold and Danya Perry both following us very closely. Um, thank you for making time for us tonight.